on December 30th, 2003, I was there. In case you missed it from my last video, I had no job. No job, no school to worry about until my final semester of college started, no girlfriend. Okay. I did have a girlfriend at the time, but she was spending the winter break of the college year at her parents' house in the East Bay. I hadn't seen her since Christmas Eve after I celebrated a night of Hanukkah up there the night before. So my life was wide open to do whatever. That's when I began condensing all of the videotapes of the games I went to into one long 8 hour highlight reel. I never thought I would be taking those tapes and turning it into storytime videos on YouTube. Even if I had not lost my job when I did, I still had a ticket to this game regardless. After the Sharks game I went to the night before, it was just one more fun way to spend my shiftless holiday season. Well, I'll stop talking about myself for now and get on with it. Another season, another trip for Fresno State to the stadium of their Western Athletic Conference rivals for yet another December bowl game. Their season was good, but not great. Fresno State finished the 2003 season at 8-5, just like in 2002. The two conference losses were to Boise State and Hawaii just like in 2002 and 2001. In fact, the only impressive win of that season was against Oregon State, just like in 2001. But all of this would be good enough for the Bulldogs under coach Pat Hill to play in their fourth consecutive SBFC. After three tries, they finally won the Classic with a 30-21 win over Georgia Tech. Fresno State had a couple of familiar faces that I saw in the last bowl game I went to in 2001, Rodney Wright and Bernard Berrien. Their quarterback was Paul Pinniger. Pinniger would be the field general for the Dogs in all four years of his college career, beginning in 2002 after David Carr graduated and became a draft bust. Pinniger's career highlight was in 2005. He would throw for 317 yards and four touchdowns on November 19th. Unfortunately, he would also throw for four interceptions, and that made all the difference as the Bulldogs fell to the almost unbeatable USC Trojans. I said almost unbeatable. The next contestant to step in the ring with the SBFC regulars wouldn't have to travel far. UCLA Bruins were having a very promising season in 2003 after posting a perfect October record. Then it all fell apart after losing out the rest of the season in November. But a 6-6 six six record made them bowl eligible. After the dismal attendance at the 2002 SBFC, it was only natural that UCLA would be picked over Washington to represent the Pac-10 at this game. Their starting quarterback was Drew Olson. Olson did fine with UCLA. In his 2005 senior season, he was nominated as a finalist for the Johnny Unitas Golden Arm Award and the Manning Award. He went undrafted in the 2006 NFL Draft. Olson was on the Ravens practice squad in 2006, and he spent 2007 with the 49ers, Panthers, and the Amsterdam Admirals of NFL Europe. That's about it. While I was writing the script for this episode, I couldn't believe that I actually got to see one particular player in person. He was a freshman running back that would become a fantasy football owner's wet dream in the National Football League. Maurice Drew, better known in the latter half of the 2000s as Maurice Jones Drew, or simply MJD. Drew played three seasons at UCLA and was a product of the National High School football powerhouse that was De La Salle High School in California. As a true freshman, Drew was the first Bruin to lead the team in rushes since Deshaun Foster in 1998. His sophomore year, MJD ran for over 1,000 yards. In his final season in 2005, he was a unanimous All-American. That same year, he led the country in punt returning, the first Bruin to accomplish the feat since Jackie Robinson. Yes, that Jackie Robinson. After his college career, Drew would be drafted in the second round by the Jacksonville Jaguars in 2006. In his eight seasons with the Jags, he went to the Pro Bowl three times. He led the NFL in rushing yards in the 2011 season. As of this video, he holds many franchise records in many offensive categories for the Jaguars. MJD would spend his last season playing for his hometown team, the Oakland Raiders, in 2014. Because two schools based in California were playing, the attendance at this game would double the previous year's game and the field conditions were about the same as 2002. As I mentioned in the last video I posted, steady showers poured in the city of San Jose while I was driving to the Shark Tank, so that meant the field conditions would be less than ideal. Thankfully, it didn't rain that night. I had myself a front row seat in the end zone, meaning I could be on ESPN2 that night, but I was going to learn a harsh reality about sitting in the front row in the end zone which I didn't learn when I went to a Cal Bears game in 2007, I did the same thing and the view was worse. However, I had a video screen to look at when I was in San Jose. 
On the first play of the game, Fresno State gave UCLA prime starting field position with this errant pick. Most of the bounds, Finney's going to throw on first down, and Dave Ball deflects it up in the air. Leslie had it for a moment. Did he get it? Rodney Leslie picked it off after Dave Ball deflected it in the air. No harm, no foul as UCLA went three and out. So on Fresno State's next possession, they did a little better. Marching the length of the field and ending in the drive with the easy peasy one yard touchdown run by Bryson Sumlin. After an early interception, they've recovered. 14th play of the drive. Second to goal at the one. Hand off to Sumlin again. Sumlin is in for the touchdown. And so the Bulldogs strike first. On the next UCLA possession, the Bruins got to the Fresno State 43 yard line. They would try to keep the drive going by going for it on a fourth and one. This looks like a job for MJD. He didn't practice Saturday or Sunday, but he's out here today. And here's Drew. He's not going to get the first down. He slammed down for a loss. Back to the 45 on fourth down. They went for it. Oh, well. Nearing the end of the second quarter, the Bulldogs would take advantage of the turnover on downs, which they did in three plays or less. First down now just inside the 44 of UCLA. Henniger's going to jump it to the near side to Sumlin. Sumlin to the 40. He's to the 35. He's to the 30. It's a 15 10 touchdown. Sumlin goes the distance. Fresno State's defense would cause another three and out for the Bruins. Going into the second quarter, the Bulldogs would go all the way down to the Bruins 18. Brett Vicentainer would add three more to the Dogs' lead. This will be a 36-yard attempt. He was 20 of 26. Again, he has been kicking with a bad left ankle. The kick is on the way, and it's got enough distance. It's good. For most of the second quarter, the two schools would go back and forth with not much to show for it. Well, there was a missed field goal by Vicentainer. This will be a 38-yard attempt. Out of the hole of Jordan Christensen. The kick is on the way, and the kick is wide left. Finally, with time running out of the first half and starting on their own three-yard line, UCLA finally got on the board with a spectacular catch in the end zone by Craig Bragg. Three wide out. Drew, the single running back. They call off the blitz. Back to throw is Olsen. Throwing near side. Ball up and pop. Great touchdown catch by Craig Bragg. That is the play of the game. What a catch. After a kickoff return by Bernard Berrien, stuff started getting real and a Bruins player would be asked to leave. Berrien will go to the far side, up to the 15, and will be tackled to the 16-yard line. Fresno State with 15 seconds. Now we got a fight breaking out. Pac-10 against the West, the guys from the North against the South. An interesting rivalry, and all the flags are coming out now. After the play... There were offsetting personal fouls on both the offense and the defense. There was also an unsportsmanlike, flagrant, flagrant unsportsmanlike foul on the defense. The player, by his actions, has injected himself in the remainder of the game. First Get the so hell out of here! He's through for the night. He thought he felt bad before because of the flu. He's got to feel worse now. After the first half, this was a little better than the game I went to in 2001. A tight defensive struggle. The Bruins had a chance to come back from being 10 points down. UCLA would begin the second half with the ball. They took it all the way down to the Fresno State 29. UCLA kicker Justin Medlock would try to get the Bruins within a touchdown with a 47-yard field goal attempt. And this is going to be an attempt of 47 yards. His long this year was that of 48, and it's going to be short. Good get it there, and under these conditions, you can't be surprised. The Bruins would recover from that crucial miss by getting points on special teams. Hey, hey. The snap was there, and it's blocked. And falling on it, knocking it out of bounds. So it'll be a safety. He is one of the Fresno State players. Mayoa is the guy who blocked it. They are coming over, blocked it for UCLA. They knock it out of the back of the end zone. It's a two-point play, and now they're going to have to punt it away to UCLA. play is a safety. For the rest of the game, both teams would go back and forth on the field with a little of the show for it. At the end of the third quarter, the Bulldogs turned the ball over on downs. Both teams' defenses would do their jobs. The rest of the game was a punt fest. An interception by Olsen would cement the second straight win at the SVFC for Fresno State. Norton, the fullback, comes in motion. 
Olsen back, double pumping, ball deflected and intercepted. Picked up by Sanchez. Sanchez to the 40. Sanchez to the 35. And down he goes. And Sanchez on his fourth interception of the year. Let's watch Pat Hill enjoy his Gatorade bath. And they get ready to pick him up and carry him off. And there's the Gatorade tradition. <laughs> and you love it. If you're the head football coach, you love that Gatorade. That means you won the game. UCLA would continue their bowl losing streak as they lost their third bowl game over a five-season period. Fresno State would play well in the 2004 season to be invited back to the SDFC, but they didn't accept the invitation. As a matter of fact, this would be the last time Fresno State would play in the Silicon Valley Football Classic. And my days of unemployment began when I had myself a nice front row seat to watch a defensive bowl battle when I was there on December 30th, 2003. I had myself a front row seat in the end zone, meaning I could be on ESPN2 that night. 